Hello, Jim Dramatic here. Welcome to a brand new episode of Wrote Was Episode Reviews. It is the last Series 2 episode. We are Woo! done We are done with Series 2. Um, uh, this is like a little kind of uh, watching the films on the end of, on the very last day before summer type episode. <laughs> all the battles are pretty much inconsequential. There's nothing really that major that happens in it, but they're all just little battles to kind of finish off the show. Obviously, there's the, there's the best of, but there's no point in doing that because it's just best of clips of well, quote unquote, best off series two. So, um, yes, uh, obviously, my guest with me is uh, Anderson again. Hey, up, Chuck. Hey, up. Hello. And, uh, yes, uh, so Anderson will be also joining me for Heat A of series three, whenever we get that one out. Um, good series. It's, yeah, we actually, get to start a re- <laughs> we actually get to start a really good series overall, which is nice <laughs> to see. Um, but. Yeah, well, we might as well get into the battle, because really all these are just bat- random battles, so there's no, like, real order to them. Um, as I said, I said to Anson before this, is, I've, you hear that? A little bit of paper. I've got some, I have to research this, because God damn it, I can never remember the order of how these battles go. I know the battles, I can just never remember what order they're in, so I've actually had to write down little notes as well, in case there's anything significant that happens in them. But, uh, yeah, we'll start with the first actual grudge match. There's only two grudge matches, this entire grudge match special. Oddly enough. Uh, the first one is Mortis versus Cassius. Um, now, you might remember from Heat B of Series 1 that um, somehow Recyclops, which is which was what Cassius was, somehow beat Mortis. Um, mm. I still don't understand that decision. Um, I mean, they show a clip of it, which is quite funny. They still show off the things where, where um, J- JP kept saying uh, good defense by Recyclops when it was just stuck on top of them. <laughs> um, many times, like you know, a bit of time, like a scratch on Mortis. Oh, look, damage to Mortis. Yeah, it's not. Oh much. God, yeah, the the axe. Uh, oh, I love Shunt's axe is causing damage. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> and it just tapped it. Uh, oh, uh, the old days. The old days. How, how it was a simpler time. It was, and it's kind I of obvious. A circular saw was a weapon. Indeed, yeah. and, and spikes. Uh, <laughs> um, but this is you can tell in this battle that Mort- the, the Mortis and Cassius teams generally don't give a sh- don't care about this battle being too serious whatsoever because they're I mean you can tell they're having fun in this battle like you tell like a, you know they're not even trying too hard yeah. um, <laughs> um, I mean <laughs> the funniest bit is how it ends is the fact that it's Cassius randomly driving into the pit of all th- <laughs> I mean Mortis always breaks its tracks this series for some reason and they broke it again, and as it was spinning around in a circle, Cassius <laughs> drove into the pit. It wasn't even, like near the pit; it was like there was like a massive gap next to the pit, and it still this, drove in. This was foreshadowing for series three. Oh yes. Oh oh yes. We'll Ser- my God, series three. That's that's gonna be that's gonna be, that's gonna be fun to talk about. But is this? Well, I, I refresh my memory. Is this the battle where um, Rob Knight did his infamous war cry? Yes. It, well, actually, no, I think it was the napalm match. I think it was the napalm one. Yeah, no, I know he definitely did, didn't he? he went, Wah! Yeah, I think that I, th- I think that was the, yeah. I mean, people correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, I watched the episode um, a few hours ago. I can't remember if it was the Mortis or the Napalm, uh, Napalm or the Cassius fight. But yeah, it was one of them. He definitely went woo, yeah, like randomly. <laughs> it, was it, was so, it was so funny. It was audible. That's the funniest thing about because normally they dub like loads of sound effects over the series. You can't hear all the stuff. But yeah, which is the advantage of the new series. You get to hear you get to hear everything as it should be. Yes. And here you don't hear someone shouting Razor for fifty billion time in the background, even though they're not even in the battle. Um. Uh, it's, I mean, I keep hearing that and I go, like, why are they playing that? That's the worst <laughs> audio you can play. I mean, it's like, you know, Napalm versus Caterpillar. Razor. Well, who the, where the fuck's Razor? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, there's not much to this fight, really. I mean, they just kind of dick about for ages. Then Mortis breaks down on one side and then Cassius commits suicide. And then Mortis gets yeah. picked on by the house robots again. And, um, then, and then in one of those amazing moments, Cassius tries to flip itself out of the pit and ends up flipping Mortis out of the pit. I mean, is this is this. I mean, literally, can you even call this a battle? No, it's I more. Mean, just it's a... literally the bare minimum, isn't it? Again, I mean, it's literally they nudged each other, they came into contact, and then when one actually had a chance to win, it lost. It was I don't bit... understand. <laughs> this, this was this wasn't the battle. <laughs> no, it was an exhibition fight at best. Um, yeah, but, but again, it was, this whole—it was bloody good fun, though. Oh, again, that's sort of like the whole heat in the, in the whole, really. It's not like anything yeah. amazing, but the, the fights are at least interesting. Yeah, that's the whole point of this episode. I think is literally just to have a laugh. Yeah. Um, now, speaking of having a laugh, we'll go to the second battle because there's not, not much else to say about Mortis versus Cassius. This is gonna be quite a short episode for the most part. Yeah. I mean, the most major battles may are the ones that involve multiple robots, which is only two. 
<laughs> so, um, the next, oh, actually, no, three, sorry. Um, the second one is the Reserve Rumble. Um, now, honestly, this shows you why some of these robots didn't make it into the series. <laughs> um, now, there are a few. There's a few that I think are at least okay looking, but then when they actually battled, they didn't do anything. Um, should we start with a quote unquote winner of this battle? Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to say anything bad about this really on a technical standpoint. Uh, Jim Struts is the, fir- the first ever walker in the series, and it shows it's the first ever walker because this thing barely moves. But to this guy's, these, this team's credit, they made so many great robots. They made like, I mean, at least interesting looking robots. They made this. They made uh, Miss Struts next series that kind of well hobbled along. Um, they made. Uh, Rita Rocks from the um, Techno Games is also one of their things yes. they made, which is an interesting looking thing, but it fell over. It was, in- yeah. it was it was at least interesting. And then their best ever attempt at a, uh, and that made an actual robot uh, was Arnold Arnold Terminator, in uh, AK one of my favourite robots ever made. Yeah, it, the, one of my favourite robots of all time. And it's a crime <laughs> this thing didn't make it into series five. I'm sorry, yeah. it really is. Arnold A is proof that you don't need a lot of technology and a lot of money to make a decent robot, okay? I mean, you know, you have a lot of robots out there, like Mortis or Raffin, etc. I mean, don't get me wrong, good robots, really, really good robots, and, you know, have the potential to do really well. But because the technology is so advanced, it means it's a lot harder to actually fix once it's gone banag, where hence why Raffin had to sadly pull out of this series. Mm -hmm. And then you have something like Arnold A, which is a water tank with (laughs) some... components in the centre of it and it somehow manages to last a whole five rounds of a friggin' annihilator and take Pussycat to a decision, you know, I mean, that just shows you that it, it's not all about tech and money, it's more about strategy and competent build, etc, etc. I mean, also don't forget, they, they went ha- uh, completely evenly matched with Exterminator in Series 4 as well. Yes. Which is, and also had a nice little... Um, it also had a nice little tussle with uh, Behemoth. Actually, taking yes. t- taking Behemoth on pretty well, actually, in their first battle. So it, it nearly flipped it over in the first five seconds. It I, nearly I, took out Behemoth in the first five seconds of its match. What an upset that would have been! It would have been. And back to Jim Struts, though. That's yeah. where they had I, to they had to spend two more series making weird, I, weird really weird Walker bots until they got to that stage. I but, do like Jim Struts simply because it was the first. I know it shows that it was its fir- the first, but at the end of the day, you have to start somewhere, and it, a lot of hard work went into it, obviously. Yeah. And the, the team, in my opinion, especially in English, is just such a lovely team. They really do seem like... And they're just there to have fun and have family time, and I love it. They, they, they never took it as a competition. They always took it as just having fun with the family. I, I, what more could you ask for? I agree, but the one question I have to ask is, if he knew the format of Series 2, why did he choose a walker that can't move very fast? Well, I mean, in this case, uh, could barely move. <laughs> exactly. In, in this in this particular series, it seems like a really weirdly odd choice to make. Like, it's really well made, but then... Well, how is this going to get past the gauntlet? How would it do in the sumo, for example, or the skittles? It couldn't do anything. It would probably take five minutes getting to the skills. It is um, definitely a robot that was not built for the series it competed in, hence why it was a reserve. Yeah, well, exactly, but at least they got to show off at some point. Yeah. But, but uh, who actually picked this as a reserve, anyway? That's I don't what I want to know, because... I think like several robots entered. A lot of them were turned away, and someone said, "No, you can't enter, but you will keep you on as a reserve." Hmm. Surely they had someone other than <laughs> someone other than Jim Struts. I mean, again, like I said, it's not me being horrible about Jim Struts, but at the end of the day, if I'm a producer, I'm looking at this. Like, I mean, I, I guess from a television standpoint, it makes good television, fair hmm. play. But at the same time, I think to myself, it's not going to get anywhere because obviously, like you said, I mean, it's slow moving. I can't see... It's such a big quarter, but it's struggled to get past, well, anything in the gauntlet. Yeah, I agree. I mean, um, so that was basically Jim Struts, really. It was just a really yeah. innovative walker for the time. But when you look back on it, when you see things like Anarchy, you see shuffle bots like uh, Drillzilla and stuff, you start thinking, this is not... This is not... You know, this is definitely a, definitely a very, very innovative first design. But that's basically what it is. Um, yeah. Yeah, but it's, again, absolutely brilliant. And again, if it was like... If there was the best engineering for robots in general, that series would probably have beaten the mule, I think, easily. Um, but the mule, mule's good. But next, um, we'll go to another robot that actually has quite a relatively nice uh, future uh, in some in some ways. Well, actually, all one series of it, I should probably say. Uh, we'll go with forklift. Forklift is 
Right, I have to say, this is probably the worst I've seen a robot get destroyed in this series. <laughs> I mean, they, they, they were so harsh. To fo- I don't even know why they, they attacked Fortlift so bad. I mean, it touched the, C- the PPZ, fair enough, but... Even then, it's the fact that yeah, they a ri- whole three inches of it went in there, yo. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, first of all, you know, it gets hammered on the top. Fair enough, the armor's pretty crap. But then they lift the top off, they flip it over, stuff like bricks start falling out of it. Its <laughs> wires get set on fire, and it's just like, stop it! It's, ho- it's just horrible. It's just like they, they rip this thing apart so badly. But at the same time, when they came back in series three, they didn't make anything much better. No. In fairness, but we'll get to that in Heat A. Actually, we will. <laughs> That's a weird thing. We say we, not very often. We say we're going to get to that, and we're now going to get to that next Heat. <laughs> but uh, Fortlift itself, I mean, it isn't horrible. It just, just, just didn't really get. Didn't really get to. I, I don't know like a past judgment. We barely saw it. But well, you know, part of why it got destroyed. I mean, all it did was take one pot shot at Jim Struts, and that was it. And they, then it ran to the CPZ and died. Yeah. Um, but I mean, Fortlift again. It's just kind of generic box with a forklift attached to the front of it. That's what forklift is. I mean, it, it's just... It is It is very Series 2. Oh, it's, oh God, I will, definitely. I will kind of give it a little credit, though, because it's got a sort of interesting forklift on it. It's got most forklifts, which are like Panic Attack style. These ones were actually like they were on a forklift truck. So, again, it's got a little bit of an innovative... It's, it's a little bit innovative, yeah, but... Um, it's a little bit like um, Indefatigable in Series 4. Yes. That's yes. exactly the same same type of design. But yeah, um, it's, it's, it is very series two, isn't it? It just look, it just has that kind of drab look to it, like series. Like your know, old kind of sheet metal, like ten- technophobic has. That's very yes. series two, that grey colour to it. There's something about it. Just, you look at it and go, you can't see any other series past maybe series three maximum. So, you, but yeah, I mean that was Fortlift. Fortlift Revenge is arguably worse in some ways. <laughs> but um, well, yeah, we actually will actually we will actually get to that so, soon. Um, another robot that appears again, uh, virtually unchanged this time, but um, Bumblebot. What was it? What was this thing doing half the time? Well, wait, how, actually, a good question. How could it even really attack Jim Struts with that massive axe it has? I know. Uh, in all fairness, though, the axe of the hammer it had in Series Two was a lot shorter than the one it had in Series Three. Oh, the Series Three <laughs> axe—that's a joke in I mean, itself. That was just daft. That was. That was a it joke. Was like two meters long. What were they thinking with I that? Don't know. Um, um, I, I've, I've never been I mean this is not me being hating on the team or anything but I've never been a fan of Bumblebot I just I didn't think it looked very nice I thought like I said it's weapon just had no control behind it I mean this in series 2 it's axe fired what once yeah they just stopped the rest of the time didn't it and it, it just stopped yeah um <laughs> I I, um, no. Actually, I mean, to its no. credit, though, it's probably the, it's probably one of the more well-built robots in the Reserve Rumble. Granted, yes, I will um, give it that. Yeah, it, it looked sturdy. Like, I'll give, I'll give it like if if I if I was if I was a producer and someone said, "Quick, I don't know, Wheel of Souls has broken down. We need one of these five robots." I'd go probably pick Bumblebot. Honestly, I just go yeah. Bumblebot. You go through because honestly, the other two left aren't that great. Foot me off, Jim Struts can't Bumblebot. do anything. Yeah, I mean, he's never painted like a bumblebee. I don't get why it's called Bumblebot. It never, never. It's like, um, like I never understood how Tender Crest and Limpet had tiger stripe colours. I still don't really understand why. It's just these weird design choices that don't make sense to me. And that's, um, yeah, that's another one. But yeah, I mean, Bumblebot. We'll, we'll get. I'll talk about that more in its Series Three appearance because it actually does. It actually, you know, does more than just, you know, flail its axe once and then get pushed into the pit. So it this thing nearly died against Millie Amber. That says it all. That was pretty funny. Um, but um, next, um, lateral thought. What? It, what? Is this my, hands are one of the most boring looking robots I've seen in my life. It's just a six wheeled box. That's literally all it's it is with six, spikes. It's, and, it's, and it's a middleweight as well. <laughs> it basically is. And, and the thing is, see, uh, did you see how wrecked it got by Shunt's axe as well? Literally one shot from Shunt's axe literally destroyed it. Basically, one of the few times that Shunt's axe in series two did damage, apart from like a panic attack, and and actually on Fortlet well, as well. But, um, yeah, I mean, Lateral Fort just literally drove into the CPZ and then got killed. And that's all it did. They didn't do anything else in the entire battle. Um, yeah, that, that was Lateral Fort. That was, that, 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 was, that, was, that was Lateral Fort. That's all I can say about it. It's just so boring. It didn't do anything. It, it, it didn't do anything. It died almost immediately. Um... Actually, Joe was worse, though. His malice actually broke down at the very start. It broke down it's at the very shame, start. Because I like the look of Malice. It didn't look like your, your stereotypical Series 2 robot. It actually looked like... It looked like um, a Series 3 robot, almost. It, 
Mallor. And also, it looks like a Series 3 robot, Mallor. Yeah, yeah, I was actually thinking that myself. I mean, it looked like something you'd see in, like, you know... Ve- like Vector or something. Of... Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, I thought it looked pretty cool, and, it, and then it, it died. Yeah. And it plucked up and, and dumped in the bit, as, as you do, you know. Appropriately, appropriately so. It wasn't very... Ma- uh, there was a lot of malice given to it, but, um... Again. Oh, and... That... So, yeah, it was terrible. But uh, lateral thought and malice are the only two that don't appear again at any point, so... Yeah. I get, they didn't even try again, so it's like, you know, can't say much about them. They just didn't really. They're just a team that didn't really return and didn't do well. And yeah. that was, yeah, that was basically it. That that was a reserve rumble, folks. That was, yeah. Jim Str- <laughs> basically, I can stop the entire match. Jim Struts moved forwards. Uh, Bumblebot won, won, went around a bit, then got pushed in the pit. Fallout got destroyed. Lattle thought got destroyed, and Malice broke down. That was the battle. That was your five minutes, folks. Because Jim Struts, they would have, because they would have pretty pretty much just. Jig on the spot. It was, it was considered the winner. <laughs> Actually, yeah, but that was reserve rumble. Fucking hell. Yeah. Actually, the best battle of the uh, of the heat now is the internet infernal insurrection. <laughs> oh. Well, I call it. I barely call this a battle. Can I call this a battle? This is just Sergeant Bash uh, having an orgasm. Just, this just is what. Yeah. And this, this, this is Deator. N- Nemesis. This is, ne- sorry, not yeah, Sorry, Nemesis. Sorry, this is Nemesis. This is George Francis's Sacromolot before Sacromolot existed thing, covered in petrol and being set on fire by Sergeant Bash. It's uh, funny, it's silly, it's daft. I loved it. They there you go. I mean, they had a the two best things. Actually, I want to correct you. It's not actually George Francis's robot. It was a producer's robot that he just drove. Oh yeah, yeah. It was sorry, made by yeah, a producer. Yeah, being a donkey there. That's fair enough. But the actually two things I liked is that they gave a, they put the kebab. The, the kebab finally got roasted on this series because it, it didn't get yeah. set on fire against onslaught, which is really disappointing. And um, and also the Catherine wheel in Ram Rombit was the funniest thing ever. It just yes. spins round, but just spinning round this twirl of like you know coloured smoke flying out of it, its head, and it's just like. Well, was there oh even a winner God. in this? I mean, let's think about. I mean, think Sarge, about Sergeant this, Bash I mean, was a winner. Well, no, no one stopped moving though. I mean, that's what. I... <laughs> Is this called C? Oh, alright, fair enough then. But the thing is, in, in this series, the damage cost was a very high amount, so Sergeant Bash won it. Yeah, <laughs> although, some of the, although, won. although Sergeant Bash did get set on fire, because so some of the fur fell on him, and he just had a little bit of flame stuck in him. And actually, there was one moment... Say, if you are an arsonist, you will love this. Oh, God, you, you'll be loving this. Actually, there was one moment that Ma- really... Master Master there was Master one moment... is a huge fan of us. I know, but I saw this one thing. There was one bit that really made me laugh, and I noticed it when I rewatched it. And it was actually before the battle. It's that bit where they're just going through like, oh, here are the robots. Oh, you got Ram Rombat, and here's you know, and here's Nemesis. And there's a bit where Sergeant Bash turns his flamethrower on, and one of the Nemesis guys jumps slightly. <laughs> rewatch it, rewatch it. It's right. It's when they're just showing like the picture of the, you know Nemesis with the um, team in the booth, and he does it. And he just jumps slightly. They start laughing at him. <laughs> it's one of the funniest things. I just never noticed that. I was like, yeah, that's pretty funny. I just it's always a little moment. You just rewatch. Watch you mean we watch this old episode? You just one bit you never miss, and that's one of them. Um, yeah, that was nothing much. Not much the infernal insurrection, to be honest. With you. <laughs> um, <laughs> Super Showdown, on the other hand, actually has something to talk about because you know all four robots are. I don't know. There's something. I mean, we'll start with Siren, probably the least interesting one of the four. Yeah. Um, Siren. Um, now I have to explain about its battle. I call it a battle. Um, this is one complaint I have with this with this special is that they go through quite a lot of weight classes, but don't show the battles till they got to the final. Or you know, like for example, we've got four robots here that are super heavyweights apparently, yet we don't see the two other robots they beat. We just see like a two second th- bit of their battle. Like yeah. I think they should have made a whole episode on the weight classes. In my mm-hmm. in my opinion, they could have easily had that. You got that. You got the featherweights, lightweights, middleweights, and then four super heavyweight battles with the final. You could make yeah. an extended episode, maybe. It just feels like it wasted potential. Like they filmed it all. They filmed it, and they still didn't use it. Yeah. Um, but Siren was against two robots that actually had um, interesting roots. There was Thud. Thud was actually was supposed to be a regular heavyweight, but they failed to qualify because they missed the uh, qualification. So they got put in this random reserve, this was this rumble, um, and they actually later make Atlas. Uh, the series three robot, oh, but that, I guess God. that hand. Atlas. No, it does have it does have the shunt's best moment of series three though. But oh, it does, yeah, yeah. But, but Atlas, I mean, Atlas and Thud look identical. They look the same thing. Except one's got tracks and one's got wheels. Um, they're the same shape, same weapon at the back. It literally looks exactly identical. Uh, and Rota Osha, I mentioned this briefly at one point, but um, Rota Osha was a robot. Ox. 
It means it means red ox in a red ge- ox. in German. Oh, Say so I did I did German for German for eight years. I'd be Vassa Osher. Um, oh yeah, of course it would. What a donkey. <laughs> um, but what Rosa Osha was a robot that was out of control. It's one of the few out of control robots ever, because this thing just ran around. They couldn't get it to start, then it eventually started. It ran into a wall, broke something, and then Siren just got declared the winner. Yeah. It, had, like, it had a jackhammer on the front of it. It had an actual jackhammer, and it was, and it was so powerful that it broke to the side one. They're like, "Well, you're far too dangerous. Get out of my arena." Yeah, and it's a shame, really, because that thing probably would have packed quite a nasty punch. <laughs> yeah, it's a massive hammer on this thing. I mean, I thought the red bit was just like a, a motor hold. No, 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 that's not the hammer. That's not the hammer. Oh, where's the hammer? Basically, if you look, no, no, no. There's not a ha- there's the back of the hammer, right? Is it? Li- it's literally a jackhammer. You know, like the bit on the end of a jackhammer, which road workers use. Oh, that's right. Concrete. That, that that one of them is sticking out on the front of it. Sticking out the front of it. I thought I didn't know that. But yeah, um... basically, that 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 was going. Obviously, that thing flies quickly and it breaks concrete. Well, it hit the sidewall and broke it. <laughs> Jesus Christ! But somehow, somehow, Thud didn't do enough to beat Siren. I don't know what Thud. I mean, Thud didn't break down, so I don't know what happened to it. But um, yeah, somehow Siren won that. It's the only one where it's least at least conclusive one. Like it just didn't just somehow yeah. won. Um, Kick Robot. I'll be honest with you. I'm very sad these guys didn't come back because I actually like the design of this thing. It's got a cherub vibe to it. Yeah. You know, from it would have been yeah. Nice yeah. Than the as a heavyweight. Yeah. I mean, actually, it's not that much heavier than the weight limit at the moment. It's 116 kilograms. Actually, it was 106 kilograms. I think it's actually it'd be all right for now. It would be okay for now, yeah. I mean, yeah. it was a very effective design. It was, I mean, it was, it was like what I like, simple but effective. Yeah. And I say that has that ch- This is a perfect example. It was invertible, hmm. so lifted were no longer a problem. It had powerful weaponry, great, uh, and a good good drive. So, like, yeah, very good robot. Yeah, I mean, actually, again, it has that Cherub look to it. It has that kind of, those little front prongs on it. Also, we'll see, yeah. we'll see, we'll see Cherub as a recording. We'll see it this Sunday in their heat. Obviously, the Gabriel... Um, so a spin-off of Gabriel, and yes. uh, yeah, and um, yeah, it's got like a nice little lifter, and it actually managed to lift a robot over, um, which was actually both the robots it faced actually were um, pl- replaced by a reserve, um, because Minotaur was part of um, Mortis's. Same guys made Mortis. Yes. Random violence technologies, uh, and of course, unfortunately, uh, Wheelosaurus replaced them at the last moment. Which actually, I don't know. I mean, I'm kind of glad because Manosaur broke down at the very beginning of the battle, from what I remember. It yeah. just stalled in the middle of the arena and then hit Robot, flipped it over. And the other one was Reckless Endangerment, which, I'll be honest with you, has some of the barest pictures on the wiki. There's <laughs> nothing on this robot. There's not even like a picture of it outside the arena. It's just like a wedge, a side of the wedge. And um, here's a little, here's a little qu- quiz for you, Anderson. What robot was re- replaced Reckless Endangerment? Um, Griffin? Griffin, that's right. Yes, fact, I'm so glad. Cause, mm. I'm so glad because Griffin's way better than Reckless Endangerment from the look of it. Um, it still fails. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously the last, the last reserve is obviously. Uh, actually, do you remember uh, who did Pandemonium replace? The only oh. other reserve that got replaced that replaced, replaced something. Oh, good lord! Uh, I'm lost. Go on. Cassius. Cassius was supposed to be in Heat A, but the pandemic. Uh, well, well, that explains a lot. <laughs> yeah, so the elect- so they got moved down because the elect- electrical fault pushed them to a later heat. Ah, oh, fair enough. Then. I actually I only found that out today. So there you go, that's something for you. But um, that's nothing to do with this battle. I just thought it was the only other reserve and that got re- replaced something. And uh, yeah, so Kick Robot basically was one of the few robots that actually beat an opponent pretty well. <laughs> and yeah. um, we'll, we'll set we'll go to Berserk. Next, I like uh, the, Berserk. The, I, the Ber- Berserk. I, I do like Berserk. Granted, it's so much better in Series Three, Berserk Two, but yeah. I like I like Berserk. I like the fact that you know you got a deaf team have come in and it's just it's just kind of great. You don't see that kind of very often, like very many disabled teams in the Robot Wars. No. Um, the only one I can think of is the guy who made Axes in, because actually he was in a wheelchair. Yes, he was. He's a, he's the only one I can think of is like a full, or at least mostly disabled team, and. Obviously, they maybe they make Berserk 2 in Series 3 and 4, and uh, <clears throat> Twister, but Berserk 2, um, oh, cool. we'll forget Twister exists. Yeah, we don't, we don't um, mention that. <laughs> no, no, never, never. But uh, Berserk 2, the first robot to stand up to hit the disc, um, got completely gypped in their heat final. I personally th- actually wanted Hit the Disc to lose, because he deserved, didn't deserve it, in my opinion. But, you know, that's how it works, how the floor spike kills things. And Berserk in this series, 
I will admit, it's probably more standout robots, because it's got like, a massive red design to it, it's got a massive forklift at the back. Another one like forklift, actually. That, design. that, 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 che- that cheeky snarl. The cheeky snarl. Um, and it actually flipped a robot over in its, um, in its, uh, in its bow. And I will admit, both these robots it fought have some of the weirdest names I've heard in my life. <laughs> One's called Automatic Jack. That just that just sounds like um a, a, like a, like a sex toy. It does, and the other one is um <laughs> Death Jester. Death, you see that sounds like that sounds like some sort of Finnish metal band. <laughs> it does actually, you Death Jester. Admit, <laughs> Death Jester. That, you know, it sounds like something that would open for children of bottom. I mean, anyway. I mean, I mean, I mean this. I mean, <laughs> or uh, Ramstein. I mean, quickly, automatic. I mean, Death Jester was so bad. Death Jester was so bad that I actually when it rammed into uh, Automatic Jack, its shell almost came off. Like Rattus yeah. Rattus. And it's just like, oh, and he got flipped over straight after. It's like, oh, great. So that worked. Um, so Berserk actually earned its place, which is nice to see, because Automatic Jack broke down because it was shit. Um, <laughs> it just didn't do anything. It didn't do anything in its bowel, apparently. He barely moved in the in the two seconds he saw it. He saw it. Yeah. Um, and then Demon Duck, which is not a spin-off of uh, Demon Days by Gorillaz. This is just Demon Duck. Um, this, this is probably the one that I think was probably actually least deserving because did you see how wrecked it got in his battle? Yes, its front scoop fell off. Its eyes <laughs> were wobbling around. It's one. Its tracks fell off. Its top plate fl- fl- flapping about, and it only won because it was the only one that survived out of the three. Well, um, it does hold a record for the heaviest competitor or whatever. It's very heavy, this thing. 156 kilos, I think it weighed in the end, wasn't it? Actually, I think Rota Asha was heavier. Oh. It was 160 thought... something kilograms. Oh, it was. Yes, it, it was, was the heavy. Yes. It was the heaviest non-walker to compete in anything. Yes. So that's something for you. Obviously, Barry was a heavy robot as well in 120 something kilograms. Smart. 100. It was 116. 116. Yeah, it was decently heavy anyway. But yeah, these two beat it quite badly. But Demon Duck again, they didn't return. I like. I like, I like to not very diverse with Demon. I, I like the amount of pushing power that things seem to have. But. I mean, the two robots I was against weren't that great. I mean, there was actually one... They actually both look like competitors on this series. Because Botweiler looks like um, Leviathan. Yes. And Sockham looks exactly like a bigger version of Cruella. It's got the rose, <laughs> on, the, it's got the rose on the front of it. It's got the shit disc on the back of it. I'm actually starting... I'm actually, I want to know. Seriously, does anyone know? Is Sockham made by the same people? Because it looks identical to Cruella. It's seriously, it's also an upgraded version of Cruella, and that's basically all it is. It looks identical. I don't know, I just, when I just see that picture of it, I just think to myself, that's Cruella in, like, Series 3 or something. So, like, I don't know. I mean, I, I really want to know about it, because it just, all I can think of is Cruella when I see it. But Demon Duck, yeah, is just, it's just a pusher, but it survived by doing nothing and getting beaten up. So, yeah, that was Demon Duck. And the actual battle, that was all the build-up to the battle, because they didn't show us anything. <laughs> we had to talk about that. <laughs> and the actual battle, um, well, Kick Robot actually did try and lift, uh, I think it was trying to lift uh, Berserk, wasn't it, I think? Yeah, But yeah, they, they didn't, 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 get, didn't, get, didn't get a good lift on him, unfortunately. Um, Siren somehow drove into the pit. I don't know what well, it did. Like, it, drove, it drove onto the edge, and then Matilda like bummed it in, didn't Yeah, you? pretty <laughs> much. Demon Duck off-screen broke down, somehow. Shocker. I don't know what it did. It, it got wrecked pretty badly, and then kick, and then Berserk broke down after taking on the house robots. Actually, instantly took out, tried to take out Shunt, which I I found really funny. On the first hit, went straight for the house robots, um, and then they just kind of got battered. Eventually, they just kind of broke down at some point after just wandering into the house robots too many times, and then they got burnt on the plane pit. <laughs> Um, oh kick... yeah, yeah, that, that was pretty funny. Yeah, and Kick Robot was the only one that didn't survive. And in fairness, Pop was the best machine anyway, with with, yeah. with, with with Berserk. So those two are probably the better ones. And I'm kind of glad if it was one of those two that won. Kick Robot was just more simple and more easy to understand how it worked. So I just thought it just deserved it a lot more. It's just an easy robot to get off the bat. It was definitely the most mobile of the three by the end. Still like it still looks like a Series Three slash Four robot as well in some ways. It could be. Yeah. I, I could see it in Series Four if it was lighter. And not be bothered yeah. by it, but I mean, this is a team I'm really disappointed never returns. I wanted to see it come back and just didn't try again, which is a shame. It's it's a, a shame. It seemed like good guys, but yeah. So Kick Robot is the super heavyweight champion, quote unquote, big big commas. Um, now we have a break up from the uh, Super Showdown to get you the inter internet insurrection. My God, these websites look so out of date. 
when you look what, at it nowadays. Yeah, and, and, what, and what a stupid thing to have a grudge over. I mean, we, we, you know, there, there have been some silly things. Right? I mean, there was that stupid thing with Napalm and Thermidor about the bloody, you know, women don't belong in Robot Wars. Guff. There was that... Um, there was one of the Plunderbird, you know, t- Plunderbird 5 and um, Chris Chrome a lot. Plunderbird 5 and the Morgue over who was the best singers oh, yeah. in the competition. Jesus Christ. Um, the University Challenge. I never understood why we needed to see who the best university was. Whatever. Mm. We all know it's Hull. But, um... Joking. But, jeez <laughs> Louise, I mean, the, it, whoever, who's got the best webpage? Are you freaking serious? This is just so daft. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna oh, say, I'm just gonna gosh. say, I'm just gonna say out there though, at the time, I think Adam Clarks is the best, because he actually is an idiot, he's a web designer. So, yes. I'm just gonna say that out front. But, um, actually the one who lasted the longest was actually Oliver Steeple's one. I remember what, looking at that, and that was the, that's why I started remembering, oh yeah, that's what Phoenix looks like. <laughs> that's the yes. first time I hadn't seen Phoenix ever since I was like younger, I was like, oh that's what it looks like. And I was like, oh, his website showed me some stuff, and he had some nice background stuff, which was quite nice. He like, he actually took some pictures of them in the pits and stuff. Mm. Um, but, yeah, we actually had, Two robots and never got a chance to fight. We have Griffin and Body Hammer, um, and then we obviously have Corporal Punishment, who did, who were very unlucky in many ways. They could have had a good ga- battle against Panic Attack, in so- uh, I think. And um, Killer Hurts. Um, mm. Now Killer Hurts didn't do anything in this battle because they basically broke down off the start. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, that's Killer Hurts, good old reliable series two Killer Hurts. <laughs> No, it's just Killer Hurts full stop. No, I know. When it comes to reliability, but you know what? <laughs> no, actually, the Series 3 version was relatively reliable. It just kept getting lucky against, like, hit, it, it, jumped, it drove in the pit and then got put against Chaos 2. True. But the Series 2 version, just, you know, in its intro, it ran to the wall and got stuck in forward drive. It got stuck in forward drive in the skills, and it broke down randomly against ro- a roadblock. Yeah. After firing its axe once. So the Series 2 version was definitely the first attempt by far. Yes. But, um,. Now, this battle was pretty fun, because again, like Killer Hurts basically weren't really in the battle, for the most part. Griffin flipped over Sergeant Bash. That was fucking amazing, because we've got to see Griffin finally do something, and it's the only time he ever did anything, even in Series 3. We got two chances out, he got two rounds, and it still didn't do anything. Um, did, 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 uh, these guys, did these robots actually attack each other in this, or was it just... I think it was just they all just on the house robots, didn't they? They didn't even bother no. each other. Body Hammer went really far under dead metal, just kind of almost lifted them up. Over. That is one of my favourite things ever, <laughs> just seeing dead metal there. And it's just like some sort of like crab that's stuck on its side, like just trying to get away. Also, <laughs> it also I will be honest with you, it made you show you how fast Body Hammer was. It was like 15, 12 miles an hour, something like that. Yeah. It's, it, it actually did like a skid <laughs> at one yeah. point. And I was like, yeah, it did like a kind of drift, like exterminated in Series 3. I Body Hammer in the arena. It was such a shame. This is why I hate the Gauntlet in many ways, because these robots didn't get a chance, because Griffin got hounded and Body Hammer got stuck. Yeah, and, Body and, Hammer and Griffin would have had a strong, very good chance in the arena stages, I say. I agree. And what happened to Corporal Punishment? They got stuck on the little blade of of Sergeant Bash. <laughs> Some, so all this power, and it couldn't get over dead metal. They couldn't, they couldn't, it got stuck under Sergeant Bash and just got pinned somehow. Somehow, Sergeant Bash's front little rammy thingy actually did something. It's the only time he ever did anything. And, I know. And it pinned down Corporal Punishment. I just can't believe that. I really can't. I mean, but you have to admit, again, this is one of those battles which is just so funny. Like, it doesn't matter what the hell's going on, it's just great. <laughs> it's true. It was like, the f- it was like I mean, it's up there for things like uh, Willy Big Cheese's first round in Series 4. Um, uh, the first round of the All Star Series Seven. Yeah, um, exter- no, um, Bayamoth's battle in the Series Four with Arnold, with, uh, with um, Arnold Terminator and Rambot, and also and, and Millennium Bugs battle. Actually, both those first round battles are pretty fun to watch. And the Flipper Frenzy. Oh, just, just... And any any how any Housebot Robot Rebellion as well. Basically, yeah. just do, nobody gives a shit. Just um, nobody gives a shit. They just go at it full pelt and have a laugh. It's <laughs> It's just crazy. It's brilliant. And in the end. Because, I guess, because Griffin actually did something, they won. Um, <laughs> well, in all fairness, I mean... Body, Hall, okay, body, was stuck, body Hammer was stuck. And <laughs> Kilohertz was a mobile. So, yeah, I mean, Griffin was the only one that was still moving at that, technically. So. Yeah, I mean, actually, in fairness, um, Body Hammer got stuck at the very end of the match. But, True. Although, in fairness, though, ramming into a robot versus flipping it over, I know which one I'd rather have. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so Griffin won something. Say, I mean, I mean, at least Body Hammer have Pussycat later on, but that's the, that's your own. Sorry, I love you. I love you, Oliver Steeples. But that's the only victory you're gonna get in Robot Wars. Savor it. 
I mean, savor the victory. I know Oliver Street. I mean, that was a, a bit of a travesty. I, I would have loved to see Oliver because Oliver was, pr- I mean, you know, a very smart kid at the time. He was. He still it, is. It would have been lovely to have seen him build a um as robot for series two, just to see what else he could come up with. Yeah, but he's got RZD2 now, so he got he just... true. <laughs> um, and the next I call this quote unquote battles. So you only see like a highlight. It's the weight classes. I can only describe it as weight classes because there's nothing else there is. Um, we'll start with the feathers. Um, we have seen one demo- what, demolisher before. Um, they they're the ones who just were too fast for their own good in series one. Now got to win something. They actually got to win because yes. because um, you know it's a bit, a bit of an unfair advantage because they actually were in their own weight class. They weren't going to fight like um, Tracy in the next battle. So that was nice. Uh, they were against Armadillo, which is actually another Adam Clark robot. Um, he's only I really... love Armadillo. I think that robot looks great. It's a it's a beautiful looking machine. Granted, it's not very battle worthy, but my god, it's no. so beautiful to watch. The, the engineering went that little tail. It's pretty funny. Yes. Uh, Anarchy, which is not to be confused with the 101 uh, sequel. <laughs> uh, Anarchy's just a little wedge. You don't even see it in the highlights. It proves it broke down off screen. Because apparently it went like a few centimeters and just broke down. Um, yeah. And Ripper, which also broke down after not charging the battery properly. Um, you, you see it gets slammed by Demolisher. That's basically all, you, all it does. Which actually, they make Ripper's Revenge in Series 3, the box that gets flipped over by the uh, the floor spike. <laughs> in the little middleweight battle. So yes. enjoy, enjoy it while you last. You're not going to see much else of it. Um, and obviously because they were better, Demolisher, the other ones actually worked. <laughs> so they, yep. they won. Pretty simple. Fair play. Uh, the Fair light... play the day. Now, a pitiful fight is the lightweight battle, because they didn't show oh, this was anything. Just they showed yeah. nothing of this battle. They showed Slippery Star- Strana getting dist- you know, bullied, and a weird random long shot, and then they just said, oh, they won. Yeah. I, they... Think, okay, now, I actually know why this was. Why go on? Because in the battle, all the robots were very poorly driven, Hmm. barely moved towards one another and the house robots were like well this is boring let's go out there and make it exciting all the house robots attacked the lightweights and then Cease was cool so obviously the judges had no idea how to friggin judge this thing so they just said move about a bit so the, the drivers all moved around and because Slippery Shrine was the most mo- was the most mobile at the end they were like well they win then Genius. I shit you not, that is how Slippery Strana won the lightweight championship. And what's even, what, what's quite upsetting about it though is that one of the, I don't know who it was, but apparently one of the other team members of, of a different team was very upset about the decision and actually tried to get into an altercation with the driver of Slippery Strana after the battle. That's um, hilarious. That's hilarious. I know, but also quite low when you think about it. Yeah, I mean, it, I don't know. I mean, it's not funny. If, if you're that upset about losing, build a better one. Yeah, <laughs> actually do something in your battle. I mean, I mean, the robots that compete are the Slippery Strana one. Uh, this little box with a little. Um, apparently, it's a combination of st- this word Strana is a combination of strawberry and banana. Yes. Yeah, I, 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 I like that. Like it looks like a block of cheese with an octopus painted on top of it. It does. It does. Like a seashell that just kind of painted. But I like <laughs> it. I like it in its simple way. In its simple way, yeah. Uh, Spartacus, which actually is the general team, you can tell by the it's... fucking wheels on it. No, yeah, yeah, the wheels. Are de- what is it with the general team? <laughs> the I wheels. don't know. They have like military grade wheels on every single wheel. Be- it's like me on uh, Robot Arena 2. I just stick massive wheels into everything, and that's what basically what they've done. It says Spart. Actually, well, Spartacus actually looks like it looks a bit like Xenomorph slightly from Series yes. Seven. It's got, I'll say this about Spartacus, it's got a nice... It, it, it looked really good, in all fairness. For, I, for, for, the, for the light heavyweights, it was definitely the best-looking one. Honestly, I kind of want to see that over the heavyweight general they made in Series 3, which is a wedge. I'd rather see... I'd love to do like, an expanded version of that. Yeah. That'd been really cool. And then Series 4 was like the same thing, and then in their 2016 version um, was against Carbide. What more can you say? Um, uh, we have this Rosebud, which is like a weird... Rod with like a saw on the front of it that kind of like acts as a wheel. I don't understand this one at all. To be honest, with you. <laughs> no. no. Um, there's also one. I s- this is a weird name. Shadow Fiend, which is it's a grey box. Again, that sounds like that sounds like a metal band again or a punk band or something. But it's it's a grey box with spikes on it. That's basically what it is. Um, and then there was another one that says unknown on the wiki. I don't know. The rest in peace, unknown. 
<laughs> now, I actually remember when I was young, when I first got into the wiki, that that used to say something like Damascus or something. Or Damascus. Oh, 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 no, oh, there was another one. Actually, I missed that out. I forgot to write it down. Damocles. That's, that's it, Damocles, that's it. Damocles, sorry, Damocles is the uh, one with this little wedge, little grey wedge thing with a saw on it. That was it, yeah. Oh, I, I didn't know whether they, they thought it was called that and then it got, and then they realised actually maybe that's not what it's called and it was called Unknown or something. But I'm oh, sorry. So there was also, that, that just shows you how good the, the lightweights were, guys. There's an unknown robot in it. Oh, Jesus Christ. God. Actually, the middleweights, though, actually has two robots of significance for once. We have Hard Cheese. Yay! The first hard cheese. I I I am in love with hard cheese in an odd the, way. The, the most prolific. Well, one you love cheese, don't you? Well, it's not just that. It's the fact that I just love this robot so dumb. But I just, they keep coming up with the same thing every time. They're just like, like in series three, I had a little sting like kind of wavy hammer that did nothing. And then in series uh, the middleweight battle in extreme one, they had a little saw and they got destroyed in like two seconds because um, typhoon were against them. Along with Typhoon, they are the most prolific or profi- yeah, prolific um, middleweight robot. Yeah, and of course they win. <laughs> of course they win in Series 2 when they've got barely a weapon on them. And they put, actually put all effort for a weapon in Series 3 in the Extreme 1, they lose. Yeah. Uh, actually, actually, oh, no, there's also Mammoth as well. Mammoth's quite an exp- uh, prolific middleweight. Uh, it appeared in two of them. Yeah, it would be full of all appeared, the wrong reasons. And then appeared in a featherweight. All for the wrong reasons, but it's always fun to watch. But I, I, love, oh, yeah. I mean, I like hard cheese. I've got a soft spot for it, you know. I don't know why, soft cheese. I don't really care. But mm. I just I like it. And also there's Warthog. Fucking hell, Warthog. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, this is the most stroppy team I've seen in my life since Razor and <laughs> since, since Ian Lewis in Series 4. The s- oh, no. My this is, God. This is worse. This is actually worse. I mean, this was bad. This I was mean, funny. It... This was hilarious. Because he, he, he stormed off before... Like, one of them stormed off before. He's like, no, I'm not getting interviewed by Jeremy Clarkson. It's going to be terrible. Because if you don't remember... The other, one, the, other one, the other one said, I don't want to talk to you. It's like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you Joanne... I mean, they first they lost in a very pathetic way. One of the most pathetic losses I've seen. Probably the worst gauntlet run, in my opinion, just just how pathetic. At least PS Resistance couldn't do anything. Uh, I mean, like, I mean, if you don't remember, Warhog competed in the same heat as Body Hammer, I believe. Uh, heat D series yeah. one. Yeah, after the after the uh, heat, heat E, sorry, yeah E, uh, and they um they ran into the work maze and one part, tiny corner of their robot got put, caught under it and they couldn't back up. How? I, I don't get it. I mean, I can't understand why they were angry in fairness, but at the same time, it's so pathetic. And they actually, I don't, I don't know what they did in this battle, but they lost to Hard Cheese. There's also a third robot called uh, Doodlebug, named after, Doodlebug. The, named, named after the bomb. Um, and it looked pretty cool, in all fairness. It looks kind of cool, but it just broke down really quickly, apparently. So you, yeah, see, it, you, see, you, see, you, see, you see it getting nudged by Matilda in the little clip, and that's it. But Again, I don't know much about this battle because I actually don't know why Warhawk lost. I think it just broke down or something. I don't know what happened. Or maybe, or maybe it got pinned in by one centimeter of its armor again. And then um, Hard Cheese um, won it, which is nice because I mean, you know, I, I like I like Hard Cheese. It's cute. It's, it's a cute little thing. Little. Oh, they right. came. They came back with Viper in series five, and that was a fucking mess. I mean, granted, <laughs> I like the design of Viper. I like the kind of military look to it, but it's just agonizingly slow. And it just didn't work. So just like, oh god! Like they could have made like an upgraded hard cheese, maybe. Like all the robots, apart from this version of hard cheese, break down out of nowhere. The only the only one that makes sense is the Typhoon Two one, because they anyone got battered by a Typhoon that that was a, that was another shit battle in the funniest way possible. Watch it's it's like again it's just like watching it's like watching a gorilla take on loads of chihuahuas. <laughs> That's what that battle was against Typhoon 2. I remember when I was younger watching that over and over again because I recorded it on the TV. I just loved it because I just loved how pathetic the robots were. I couldn't even fade. Fa- bounce off. Yeah, and, and some game flipped out of the arena on the four flipper. My god, that was hilarious. But yeah, Hard Cheese won somehow. Um, and then the final battle, which is the second grudge match on the grudge match special. Um, <laughs> bear in mind that none of these other robots apart from the first battle actually had a grunge against each other um, we have Mortis against Napalm we went over Mortis Gate we're not going to go over it again somehow it's Mortis' fault and you know we got to have Napalm fight for them and they just drove in the pit 
Again. Mortis it's just like, <laughs> just, just, just nothing, nobody wants nothing happened. If it, if Mortis moved forward, tapped it with his axe a few times, and then they drove out the pit. Granted, they actually did knock some stuff off, mate. They knocked one of the eyes off uh, Napalm. They actually did some decent damage to the back of Napalm. And then Napalm just drove into the pit for some reason. <laughs> like, what is like, what were these, these are the two grudge matches, and both involved Mortis, and both involved their opponent driving the pit out of no pressure. <laughs> what is this? What At least, though, this one, right, Mortis was an outright winner because it didn't die before... before and and actually did some damage. Actually, did some, actually, in fairness, Mortis did get a nice hit on Cassius. They actually got a hole in the armour. They did. And this time, they actually knocked an eye off and did some decent damage to the cardboard armour at the back of Napalm. So, yeah. Granted, they actually won this one. The track didn't break off. Hallelujah. First time for everything. <laughs> um, and with that agonising end, we have done the grudge <laughs> match special the end <laughs> that was a shambles of about of a whole episode to be honest with you i mean <laughs> the, the way the way the way to end the series why well, it's perfect <laughs> it's a perfect analogy for series two shambles but I mean, um I'm, what... I'm, 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 I'm gonna say this now in all honesty i mean yeah okay on a level of battles and probably production value you know not showing certain battles and all that sort of thing and the actual the majority of the moments involved yeah, this this is pretty much a two, three out of ten, but just for sheer entertainment value, I, I, this is ten out of ten easily. So I probably, I'd probably I'd call it in the middle, and I'd give it about a five out of ten total for that. In all fairness, that's probably quite fair. Um... <laughs> it's just so funny. Every battle has me smiling. I don't know what it is. Well, wow. like mammoth versus a or whatever. Oh, that, that was that was hilarious. That was a you fucking know, hilarious just, battle. But it, it's I mean, it's an absolutely crap battle, but you can't help but love it because it's just so funny. Yeah, it was also the only walker battle where both walkers actually sort of moved. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and, and they just they just gently nudged each other. That was all a fuck this bang down you go. <laughs> yeah, I love how much pain Arach- arachnid got for no reason. They technically um, won it, but whatever. But, uh, yeah, so, as I said before, this is the end of Series 2. Thank God for that. <sighs> yes, it feels good. Granted, it's my favourite nostalgic series, but my God, it's one of the worst series in terms of actual <laughs> competency. So, we're done with Series 2. We're finally done. This sounds really weird, because I'm actually doing this out of order, because I'm recording with Sam Grand Final and Semi-Final 2. So I'm saying this now, I'm going to go back to it again. But I'm done with series two. Yes. You're, you're done with series two, which is at least. Um, a, moment, what... a moment of silence. Okay, that was fun. Yeah. Right. Hey, you guys, hey, copy my jokes here. But um, yeah, so series two is over. Series three, where the show truly begins to pick up, at, you know, pick up and really start getting battle heavy, putting all things like pinball to the side events, and actually having proper. Good robots. We've got Birth of Chaos 2, Birth of Stegosaurus, Firestorm. Some absolutely great moments happened in this series. Um, yeah, we, we, we actually get to see some, Razor do something for a change. Not in the main yeah, competition, but at least do something in the international special. Some, some of the best battles have happened in this series. I mean, oh, geez, Louise, a lot of stuff happens actually in this series. Yes, and it's just a really great series. And um, a, little, a little announcement here, I'm going to mention it now. Um, as you know, we have Anderson as a guest commentator. Do you want to say hi? Alright. Yeah, go. In case, in case you forgot, we forgot what he sounded like. We have, <laughs> um, we have Sam, obviously. We have Sam, and we have a new, a new guest commentator starting in series three. Oh, yeah, some some bloke called um, Andre in it or something like that. I don't know. Ah, uh, yeah, yes. Uh, uh, Andre, Andre the Haunted or something. I don't know. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. Now you know him. You know him. You've watched any Robot Wars with Joe. He appears on it. He's a big, um, big. Um, poster on the uh, unofficial Robot Wars fan page, which you should go and join if you like for, for Robot Wars, because I, I enjoy being on it. Um, he's, also and, pre- he's also a pretty good B, uh, B horror movie reviewer. Yeah, actually, I'm, I do actually quite like some of his videos. They're pretty good. Um, and it's Alex the Hunted, better known as Alex Hall. He will be joining me for Big Brother's Heat. That's where he's starting in Heat D of Series uh, series 3. So he's got a few, you know, three more heats to go until you see him. But I'll be, you know, I'll get in contact with them once already, ready, and uh, yeah, you actually hear a new face on this podcast. You know, to, you know the, apart from the grizzled old faces of us three, it'll be it'll be the first time there's two northerners. That's weird to hear. On, on it, that'd be weird to hear. I'll be honest, with you. but uh, yeah. So Alex, Alex Hunter will be joining us next series. Um, next series has got a lot more 
interesting stuff to talk about. There's eight robots per heat as opposed to six. So that's just as much crap as you, more crap than this series. Lots of battles. Lots of so great lots lot of more to talk over. More to talk over and I like to call it the quote unquote Barnyard series. Because apart from maybe one or two heats yeah, pretty much we did actually we actually looked at this, didn't we? I think there was only one heat, and I think it was Heat F that doesn't maybe. have an animal themed robot. <laughs> I swear there was I, I swear there was another one but I can't remember, but at least one but majority of them at least, apart from one or two maybe, have a robot based on an animal. Some multiple. So, I mean, I mean, for example, uh, Napalm's here, you have Robopig versus Bulldog Breed. Come oh. on, come on. There's I... Caterkiller. Yeah, we've got... James, a... James, I've got one. I've got, a th- I've got a thing. What? At the end of each episode of Series 3, we should do an animal count list. Well, I'm, I'm, I've already planned on doing that. Don't worry. Oh, fair enough. Then. <laughs> also, also, when 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 um, Sam Elliott sixty four gets his event after the series, the series nine new series, he's been doing like overviews of the new series of the older classic series. I will be joining in for series two and three, and I'm sorry, I'll be doing my barnyard shout out for series three. Don't you worry, that will be happening. <laughs> I've already warned him about that. Uh, I think I'm in all of those. Probably. probably yeah. Oh, yeah, I think I think I think he's doing that thing where he's like yeah, you two and a guest. I think. I yeah, well, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm Alan Davies to his Stephen Fry. Yeah, because I think Dave might be busy maybe upgrading to Jellyfish 2. I don't know what he's doing. He might be busy no doing his, or maybe he's busy having a life, you know. He's busy so. combing his fur jackets. He's busy actually doing something with his life, as opposed to yes. us two sat here ranting about <laughs> a show a show that was, wasn't even airing till like you know a year ago. <laughs> so yeah, so that was this will be that's a bit of housekeeping there, and join us for series three. It's been a it's been a a laugh, and obviously I'm going to mention this now to you, Anson, because this will be a little bit surprise you, but you won't know about this. Um, oh, so I'm, I'm, I'll be, I'll, I mean, Sam doesn't know this because I'm recording this first. I'm going to be doing a few little awards for series two. I'm doing it at the end of the main series. I'm not, this is all about the extra special, so unfortunately I'm not doing it with you. I'm doing it with Sam. But oh. that, that, that's another incentive to watch my episode. You see, you'll get to see a little, you get to comment on. I like, I like to see what you think about them afterwards because I'm just doing like little awards. Apart aside from the main ones like best engineering and best you know design and all that kind of stuff like silly awards. So um, yeah, that'd be the whole thing. So sorry to disappoint you there. I feel like I've like made, left you out in a way, but I, I was I was always planning on doing it in this grand final anyway. So it's all that's all the definitive end of the series. You know what I mean? So yeah, so that'll be cool. Um, join us for series three. I'm uh, Jim Dramatic signing off um, from series two for the last fucking time. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much, and I'm and I'm um, I'm me. Yeah, I'll, I'll see you in Heat A series three. I look, uh, yeah, look forward to a competent Heat for a change. We, <laughs> all I can say is brim her. Anyway. Oh God. <laughs> no.